Anyone for a game of dot to dot? No, I'm, I'm serious. Doing a dot to dot puzzle is just like following the wiring diagram. You pick a starting point, which is obvious in dot to dot, you, you always start at one. And you continue to follow the chain, making connection after connection until eventually you have a finished drawing. Or, by the end of this build video, a completed wiring loom. Ta-da! Now, thankfully, if you still don't believe me, Steve is on hand to walk us through every step of the process. Grab your wire strippers, your screwdriver set, and your spanner set, and well, let's get to it. So before we actually start connecting things up on the back of our car here, I want to draw your attention to two things. One is wiring installation on page 22 of the build manual, and particularly the red text here, which is all about safety. Basically, it's telling you to do a double check, get the second person to do a double check on all your connections once you've wired up before connecting the batteries. The reason for that is if you connect the batteries and you've got a wiring fault, worst case, things start to melt uh, and get hot. So there's a danger issue there. If you've got it all connected right, when we get to putting the batteries in, it'll all just work, which would be great. The second point I wanted to make is that when we come to actually connecting some of the cables, and I've got examples on the two that we installed at the front earlier, which we've tidied away, is that these bare bits, which are where the installation has been taken off, may be a little bit short, because these are going to go into this connector block here. So what I'm going to do is use my wire stripper, and what I like is about 10 millimeters of bare copper wire. And when you stripped a bit of wire like that, it's best to twist a few times and it actually helps keep it tidy and keep it neat otherwise you end up with the wire fraying and uh, becomes a bit of a mess let's do these two as well and I just want enough length there to be able to insert them into that connector block on our diagram we've got a connector block in the center here which is this connector block on the car and I'm going to start in the top right hand corner, work my way down the right hand side and then back up the left hand side to know that I've done all of those connections. So let's get started on that. The first cable we need is G2G, which has a ring terminal on one end and a little stalk at the other end. So the stalk will fit into that first right hand top hole of the connector lock and with a screwdriver I can do up the little screw in there and that's nice and secure. Then I need to take this ring terminal down to one of the heavy duty uh, connectors on the right hand relay. So I'm going to take off the nut and washer under there and fit my ring terminal onto that terminal and replace the washer and the nut. And what I'm trying to do when I'm doing wiring is to keep it neat and tidy. So you'll see I've rooted that neatly. I can see where the label is so that it makes fault finding easier later. Uh, let's just tighten that up. Don't over tighten these because you may just break something on the relay. Just gently tighten. The next cable, which is going to go from the second position on the right hand side, comes down and is G2H and will connect to the left hand relay into the second hole and if you can't get one of these into one of the holes it might be because the screws already too far in so you may need to loosen those off I actually went around and checked before I started so that's now going to come down here and wants to go onto one of my heavy duty connected uh, terminals on the left hand relay The next position on our connector block, the third one on the right hand side, is G2B, but it also has the brown wire from G2L, the three core cable. So my three core cable is here. So I'm going to want that brown wire and also G2B, which I have to hand. So G2B is actually going to go from one of the batteries 
to con the connected lock. So we're just going to leave that ring terminal end to hang over the side into the battery tray there. All right, bring this behind that cable and in front of that one. Oh no, they behind both of them actually. I think that looks tidier. Oh, jumping ahead of myself, I haven't put the brown cable from G2L in there. Let's pop that in as well. Probably easier to put the bare wire in first and then a little stem terminal. What we need to do is once we tighten that up, just give each of those a gentle tug to make sure they've both been clamped by the screw as you've done it up. So that seems good to me. As I say, we'll leave that one for when we come to install the batteries later. Last one on that right hand side is G2N, which goes to one of the spade connectors on the right hand relay, along with the green and yellow wire from G2L. So that's that one there. So let me get G2N. Now G2N is a little thin piece of wire. It's only about 15 centimeters long with a spade terminal on one end and unstripped at the other end. So I need my wire stripper again. And just double checking, it's G2N plus the green and yellow. So what I'm going to do here is actually twist those two together. And that's going to go into the bottom right hand connected lock position. And the other end of G2N goes to one of our spade terminals on our right hand relay. Again, just with other two position or two connector switches, doesn't matter which one. Eagle eyed amongst you may have spotted something went wrong when I was uh, fitting these cables in the bottom right of our connector block. And that was the fact that this brown wire came out of the hole with G2B. I thought I'd done it right. I gave it a little tug and checked, but clearly I was wrong. So I'm just gonna redo that one. It's worth double checking once you've finished all your wiring. Make sure I've got that in there. And with the bare wires, like that brown wire, it's always worth checking that you haven't pushed it in too far. And actually what the screw's connecting to is the insulation, because then you won't get a good, good, good connection. So I did check it originally. I gave it a tug. I've given it a, more of a tug and it's more secure now. And while I'm here, this other third lead, the blue lead from G2L sitting here, I'm going to actually connect where it needs to go, which is onto the remaining spade terminal of this right hand relay. It has a little piggyback connector on there. So we will be putting another lead on there shortly. So now carrying on around our connector block I need to bring into there G2F and the brown lead from G2K so that's that one and let me just reach for G2F which is this lead which has a fuse built into it that's a safety device open up the rubber cover here and we have our blade fuse this is a 5 amp fuse don't change it for anything higher rated or oh, lower rated really, it's set to be correct. So a five amp fuse. That means that if more than five amps is drawn across this circuit at some point, the fuse will blow and it prevents other things being damaged and the fuse is nice and easy to replace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip some insulation off each end of this wire. Give the wire a bit of a twist. So this needs to go into always double checking bottom left with the brown from G2K that behind that one I think tighten my screw give each one a little tug and they're secure the next two connectors up are for the motor connections and we left those two cables coming out from our motor cage when we fitted the motor cage first one to go in is the red positive lead and then the black negative lead. Then final connections into our connector block are the other end of G2F with our fuse in it 
and G2E, which I have across here. It's a little short one. So other end of G2F will go in along with that one. So next up, we're going to open up our little fuse box that we put the fuse into. Just a little screwdriver latch underneath there. There we go, pops it open. And we're going to need to dis undo the nuts in here so we can fix our cables on. G2E from our chop block, little short cable on that side. And now we've finished all our connections on our connector block, we're on to finishing off other connections. So G2E, fuse, a G2D, which comes from the isolator switch, goes to this side of the fuse. And we left that tucked in down here previously. We'll bring that around here. And we can close our fuse box cover. There we go. Now, what else have we got left? We've got a cable hanging here. So let's work out what that is. So that comes from our two core G2K cable. And looking at the diagram, the blue one goes to one of the spade connectors on our right hand fuse. So let's just route that behind some others. And it doesn't matter which side of the relay spades that goes on. There we go. I've got down here also another cable. This is G2C that comes from our isolator switch. That's going to go to one of the batteries, so we'll leave that heading into the battery tray at the moment. That leaves me with two cables. I have G2A. Again, that's a battery connector cable, so it goes from one battery to the other, so I'm going to leave it in the battery tray. And this thin red one, G2M, and G2M on our diagram links the two relays from spade connector to spade connector. So we can just push these on. And that is our wiring finished, apart from, and I'll stress this, get someone else to double check it before we get into putting batteries in. Yep, I second that. It's really easy to make a connection in the wrong place and it never hurts to have someone else double check it. A little trick that I know is to print off another copy of the wiring diagram and go over it with a highlighter marking the cables as you check them. This way you'll know which cables you've checked and it'll be easy to see which cables you've missed. There are many different ways in engineering to illustrate an electrical circuit. The wiring diagram shows the layout of components relative to each other and is really useful for the installation phase. Another type of diagram is a circuit diagram. This uses standardized symbols and is used in the designing phase to plan how the circuit will work. Let's make a basic motor circuit to show you what I mean. We need a motor, a battery, and a switch to turn it on and off. Pretty simple. We use straight lines to connect it all together. And this is what it looks like in real life. Flip the switch and away the motor goes. Now this is really basic and the circuit on your car has a lot more devices to improve safety, such as fuses and relays. But if you really fancy the challenge, why not try and convert the wiring diagram into a circuit diagram? All of the symbols you need are on the screen now. This is really advanced stuff which is why we also have made a template layout for you which has got the components already placed. All you need to do is connect it up following the wiring diagram that's in the build manual. If you get stuck, the completed wiring diagram will be at the end of the video for you to check against. Good luck! Now before we get back to wiring the car, we're going to be working with batteries next. And do you remember what Steve said in the first build video? No? Well, thankfully I'm here to remind you. When working with batteries, do not connect the terminals of a battery directly together. This is really dangerous and in the worst situations can lead to a fire. So please be sensible and always have adult supervision when working with the batteries. Now, let's see where Steve got to. Now we've actually completed our wiring, I've actually had a, a colleague 
double check that I've got it all right and he's given me the okay. So what we're going to do now is actually install our batteries and run a motor test and make sure our car runs. We're doing this with the car up on trestles. What I've checked is that when I rotate the rear axle and the wheel that nothing gets in the way of that. So we need to keep hands and clothing and so on free of anything that's going to move. So my batteries, just off to one side, I'll just get one at a time because they are heavy items. So when carrying them, use the handles attached, but also keep a hand underneath because the handles, if they let go, you don't want to drop it. So fit one in on one side and then the other on the other side. And these ideally go in with the terminals away from each other. So you want the terminals on the outside of the car there and towards the center here. What we then do is we take our G2C cable that comes from our isolator switch and connect it to a black negative on this side. And use my screwdriver to tighten that down. Doesn't need to be very tight, but does need to be sufficiently tight to make a good connection. And then to the positive on the other battery, we connect G2B. And now I'm going to make this connection next, but before I do that, I need to double check when you're connecting batteries up is that your isolator switch is not switched on, both at the rear and at the front there. So I've just turned that one off. So now I can connect my battery link cable, G2A, which goes between the two batteries on a negative to positive connection. What I need now is my red key for my isolator. And it's not in shot. Oh, here we go. Found it. Lesson learnt. Put it somewhere where you know where it is and keep it safe. So, I switched that from the off position to the on position and then go to the front of the car and switch the rocker switch on. That gives me a red light on the little rocker switch that tells me everything is live. Double check that we're clear of what's going to move and then if I press the throttle button <coughs> success we've got a car that works fantastic news. Now, what I would say at this point is go back then and disconnect your batteries, take them out, store them away safely so you can carry on and get your car finished off. But there is one further part to fit when you do fit the batteries. This is your battery strap. I didn't do it for this test, but when you're actually going to go racing, we should have our battery strap in here. The purpose of this is to make sure that the batteries can't come out of the car, can't move when you're actually racing and that just screws down and holds those two batteries in place. So that's our electrics all ready for a successful day's racing. And as promised, here's the completed circuit diagram for the G2 Goblin. Well done if you did give it a go, it's really tricky. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power Project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe. Pretty please? Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.